Hello, everybody. Um, I don't even know where to start today. I really don't. Um, for people who are new in the group, we like to come on and do a Facebook Live and do a big discussion on you know the RT changes, the LTV changes, uh, different tips for landlords. But today, we're going to come to you regarding the Bill 184. It's kind of bad news. It is between the kids getting off for like three weeks now and and Bill, <laughs> one, Bill 184. The kids being off only affects you too. Uh, thanks, Jen. <laughs> we yeah. We, we don't care so much. <laughs> You really get right, right on Facebook Live. You're gonna make me cry now. Like seriously. Sorry, your kids are awesome. <laughs> we don't know where to start. It's it's. We really thought by uh, us putting our 10-page report in, giving the government a lot of different solutions that are not only good for landlords and the tenants, and also the taxpayers. Um, and they definitely came out, and they really wanted us to give them the thought process of you know what way we would want. I don't know who they consult with. I definitely I, not landlords. I I honestly don't know. I it's it's a shocking to see the type of Bill 184 and how they really are chiming in on the unlawful evictions and in bad faith and 12 notices more so than any other policy that's out there. The landlords are are waiting seven months to get evictions or longer. They're waiting five months to get a hearing date, and then they have tenants who are abusing that that process and applying for states mm -hmm. and when they get into the concept that they want to penalize landlords abusing that system but they they're not asking themselves the question or why are landlords doing unlawful evictions well in all honesty there's only 355 applications so they're making all these laws based on 355 applications in the one for for n12s and n15s i love that you know this oh i found out i said it Oh, I was so today. So how many, how many uh, N four uh, or sorry L one applications? Well, altogether, it's fifty five thousand. Oh, sorry, fifty eight thousand four hundred applications for twenty three. So like <laughs> one yeah, one percent of the the applications are for N twelves and. 58,000? Right. 1% of the, the 58,000? Well, so the intended applications the, only equal The problems about don't matter. It's it's the little guys. Yeah. Okay. So we, we jumped on with the Ministry of Housing today. There was a webinar that was being hosted. We got invited to this. We had a, a couple of our members, our executive members that were on with us to pay attention to what they were describing as Bill 184. And they pretty much said exactly what they emailed us. And it was like we thought it would get more into detail about the different type of mediation that the government is trying to, to implement. Uh, this bill has passed the first reading. We don't know what's going to happen when the date is for the second reading based on the coronavirus that has shut down everything, the world. Yeah. The world. Um, so that could delay the second reading. But within the second reading, I, I, I've gotten in touch with my MPP who states that it will go to a committee to over, overlook the Bill 184 and they also will be calling in specialists and also people from the public. So I informed my MPP that I want to be a part of that process before the second reading happens. Um, in order to give our opinion on this bill. And remember guys, this bill, they believe is going to encourage more landlords into the industry and it's gonna provide more landlords with protection and it doesn't do squat. So we'll start off with preventing the unlawful evictions. If the landlord wanted to evict a tenant to use the unit for themselves, they would have to tell the landlord and tenant for it if they have done it before, which would help adjudicators look for patterns and identify landlords who be breaking the law Landlords would also have to file an affidavit at the same time as they file for a non-fault eviction application so tenants can obtain a copy in advance of the hearing. Now, this right now is that they're keeping a record of which landlords are abusing the system. Now, for me, I get it. I'm okay with this. You want to keep a record, but why aren't we keeping a record of tenants who are abusing the system. The ones who are going there day after day after day with different landlords, why is, and that is the question that we put into this, to the ministry through this, and they're like, oh, sorry, we don't know about that right now because it's gonna be a part of like the social justice tribunals of Ontario. So again, the government's now pointing fingers at the social justice tribunal to say, we don't know what's happening there. 
but we're going to go there and we're going to talk to them. So again, we totally believe in it. If you want to do that, that's one thing, but if you do it for one, you have to do it for the other. Compensation for tenants for no fault evictions. So normally when you have a landlord taking it over for their own personal use, you're giving the, land, the tenant a uh, one month's rent for compensation. But when it comes down to the owner of that property selling the property, then it was never the compensation uh, given to the tenant based on the owner moving mm -hmm. in right. to that property. Now with the new mm -hmm. owners moving in or not, the current owner needs to compensate that tenant based on the new one moving in. And this law is actually going to affect real estate agents because they're not going to sell properties to investors. They're going to sell properties to people that are buying it for their own use because they don't want the hassle of having to deal with tenants who won't leave. Yep. Now, if you're caught and you're doing this because everyone knows, because the 2.2%, because of our tenants being uh, not enjoyable to work with and, and causing so much problems, not only for the landlord, but other good paying tenants in the rental unit, they do do that. But if you do, there is now, there's always been a penalty of $25,000, but now it's gone to fifty thousand dollars for individuals and it goes from a hundred thousand dollars for corporations all the way up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for corporation mm -hmm. so it's at the point where is the money really going to be you know what is going to create more rental units you're just taking that money that they're getting fined and preventing them from putting it back into the market to create more units because this is a supply and demand issue the government knows it's a supply and demand issue and why they keep hammering landlords with responsibilities, it's just gonna backfire. We're gonna lose more stock off the rental market. And you know what's even gonna happen? Landlords are gonna be providing the toothpaste for the same price with less than the tube. And we'll get back to that one. Increasing the tenant's compensation for bad tenants. So for the bad faith evictions, landlords who evict tenants to repair or to renovate a unit must give the tenant the opportunity to move back in at the same rent which is normal anyways, yeah. before offering it to others. If you don't, landlords can be ordered to compensate the tenant currently. The landlord can be ordered to pay the difference between the old and the new rent up to one year period. The proposed changes will give tenants two years to file a claim, two years to file a claim and increase the possible compensation by an additional full year's rent up to a maximum of $35,000. So this is going to be somebody's full-time job. Oh, 100%. They know they're going to get this kind of payout. They're going to be watching this like a hawk. The increased compensation would also apply in bad faith, own use evictions, where the land slash purchasers does not use this to themselves. So this is more of the concept where landlords do something illegal, and then if the tenants find out about it, you know, you get your little, little measly fee to it, and they move on with the day. And really, are you going to try to evict that one person that they now accept it just to put these people back in. But this is why, why couldn't they create a policy which the place needs work? We have deteriorating properties just like government housing does, which they are deemed to be the worst. Like when they got money from the government, John Tory, the Toronto mayor, literally came up and was like, we got billions not to create no new housing. This is just to repair new housing. And they were so excited for it. So now you expect landlords to be renovating them based on the tenant's time, doing the money that costs a fortune. And if you're paying for someone to do the labor for you to offer it back to them, why would the landlords be doing it? They're just going to do the bare necessities, the bare minimum of what's required based on property standards probably getting involved. And on top of that, there's actually a trade shortage as well. So that's going to cost the landlord even more money with the shortages and trades, shortages of plumbers, shortages of yeah. drywallers, shortages of all of those. So you're competing with other people for those kind of, same kind of workers. Yeah. So you're going to be paying more and you're still not going to be able to raise the rent after the fact. And it's only fair that we were able to take the amount of money that was made for renovations in itself, work in a policy or a formula to calculate the new rent. Mm -hmm. How come that's not fair? We wouldn't be seeing N12 and N13 notices if you actually had a proper increase to cover the increases that landlords are occurring, occurring based on government because the utilities are increasing, the taxes are increasing, the property taxes are increasing, but we can't recoup that because these people are tenants. Not all landlords are rich, not all tenants are poor, 
but they're coming into the part that this bill is going to help landlords because they're going to streamline the landlord and tenant work process. <laughs> but nowhere near do they cut down the 14-day notice to seven. No way they take away the 11-day standard eviction no. uh, wait time before you file for the sheriff. Being able to access alternative dispute resolution services like mediation instead of formal hearing will appropriate will make it easier to resolve certain disputes. To encourage and negotiate settlements, landlords who reach an agreement with the tenant on an outstanding rent will have to go back to the landlord and tenant board for an eviction hearing. If the tenant breaches the repayment agreement, uh, requirements tends to give an advance notice of any new issue they want to raise at the eviction hearing would help everyone prepare and prevent hearing and from a delay of being postponed. Are you, are you kidding me? The, the, this is how you're streamlining the approach? When we talk about mediation and getting mediation to be a part of that solution, it's not its not a part where we want you to just throw it in there with the rest of the mess that you got going on here. It's about taking out something and putting mediation in place. But this has to be a volunteer from both parties, just like it currently is at the landlord and tenant board. There's going to be certain cases and certain forms that need to be mediated through the phone line, through the web, versus having to be in person at the landlord and tenant board. But for whatever reason, they just want to make more of a mess of what the landlord and tenant board it is and throw in another process because the process in itself is already bumboggled because of non-payment rent. I'm just, I'm so upset with them right now. It's not even funny. I Before just, we started this, Kayla's like, I don't even know how to, to come on here and talk about this. And I was like, you just got to come on and say this makes us disappointed. Like. It makes me lose my faith in government in itself. Mm -hmm. it, it makes us to think there's an alternative motive of why they would make landlords like be put on the hook for all of this and not help us because we are the temporary shelter for the government. If they stay in our units longer, that means they're not in the shelter. They're not paying for the ho the hotels. They're not paying for emergency shelters that have uh, that's in the winter time. So this is a part where they're utilizing, they're, we're make, they're making us work for them with no compensation. And this is part that I get into. We have teachers who don't like their working environment and they will protest. We have the garbage, we have transit, we have everybody that can come out there and they can protest. And landlords are sitting here and we have to keep taking this mm -hmm. day after day. And so when we get into the cause is my favorite part here where it says this is how they're going to make it easier to be a landlord. Say that one, Jen. Read it out. Yeah. Then. To make it easier to be a landlord, landlords will no longer have to submit documents to the landlord and tenant board on a CD ROM. That okay. that's their that's their how it's gonna be easier. Uh, win, just win. because we don't have to buy it. I don't know CD how to edit, but I wanted to swear right now and just beep it out. <laughs> But yeah, again, make it easier to be a landlord. Landlords will not have to submit documents to the landlord and tenant board on a CD ROM. Um, yeah, the tenants. Yeah, the tenants how old the fridge is and how much energy it uses, or give tenants printed pamphlets uh, duplicating information in the standard lease. It would also allow landlords a grace period who inadvertently use an old version of the lease when it's updated. Landlords seeking compensation for unpaid utilities rent and or damages from the current or formal tenant would have their disputes handled by the landlord and tenant board rather than the small claims court. So so this means that we're now gonna probably going to double the amount of cases that landlords are going to bring on tenants uh, at the landlord and tenant board. So instead of like, what, a four-month waiting period for a hearing, if you're lucky, it's now going to be eight because I don't know about you, but my tenants, um, I, I think I go after them, like I harass them more for paying their utilities than I do for the rent. And, and this is a, you, you already have a system that is completely bogged down with non-payment rents. And now yeah. you want to, and even though we have utilities, we would love to have the utilities kind of be dealt, up, dealt with at the board, but we know we want to get an N5 going on so we can evict them. Mm -hmm. I know we're not going to get money back from them because really we ain't going to get blood from a stone not anyways. So it's coming down to the point where they know they want the landlord and tenant board to handle this. Why? Because they get two hundred dollars a pop to deal with it, we're feeding a giant. Well, it's cheaper to get it dealt with at the at the yes, small claims court actually, because it's only eighty five dollars to file at small claims court, and it's so two hundred dollars to yeah. file at the yeah. MTB. So, so we just increase our costs. Yeah, we just mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
increase our costs and we'll pass it to the tenants. We're going to start like a massive, a lot of the landlords are like, you know, our tenants pay on time, you're good. No, we're giving them the rent increases. Start moving around your tenants. Start charging for the fridge and the stove. Start charging for parking. Start charging for air conditioning. Start charging for everything that you possibly can because obviously the government ain't listening. I'm going to calm down right now. So, <laughs> allow more tools for better enforcement of the RTA offenses. To improve enforcement process, investigators would also allow the court order to access financial records more easily in order to investigate offenses related to filing a false or misleading information with the landlord and tenant board. The prosecution of the electronic document retained by the landlord and tenant board would be clarified. The ministry would also have more time to enforce the rules when the landlord fails to reimburse a tenant for refundable key deposit. They already, they already take care of that, though, at the, uh, the uh, housing enforcement unit. They already take care of that. So this is just a duplicate of services. So if you have a problem with, uh, if you're a tenant, you have a problem with getting your key deposit back, all you have to do is call the tenant for, sorry, the housing enforcement unit, and they will deal with that. So why it's in here twice, like why it's in here and it's all over there, is beyond me. That's so really if you get like the whole term <clears throat> that I just read there and you get to the bottom, it's like key deposit. Because I like the whole related to the I know, I was kind of thinking and maybe that one could possibly be something that, that landlords could use and then they turn it around and it'd be a, a tenant but, positive. So I'm like, so are we allowed to get the court order to access their financial records to prove that they haven't paid us rent? Because that is the number one because, tactic. Because that's, that's what they tell us. Oh, I, I gave them a check. Yeah, but your check bounced. A landlord to allow, oh, I love this one. Love this one. Allow landlords to recover costs when bad behavior costs landlords money, such as a tenant pulling a fire alarm for no reason. Landlords will be able to apply to the landlord and tenant board to recover their costs rather than resulting into an eviction. We already have problems getting them to pay their rent. How are they going to pay for a fine? Like those fines are way excessive. Like, Why wouldn't we want them five thousand dollars sometimes? These problems. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Who the hell is writing this shit? Sorry. Beep. <laughs> oh man. Next time, just hit me and I'll beep while you swear. <laughs> I think that's, I think that's a good point though. Who who did they consult? I'd like to know who they consulted for this. So they're damaging, they're damaging the shit out of your unit, but hey, you can file $200 and we're going to put a paper in place, piece of paper in place to state that the tenant now owes this much money for damages and then you got to what? Track them down? Apply at the small claims court to get no, you can't grant. apply. It has to do with the tenant. You can't oh, apply. You can only snap. apply to the, to the, it's a tenant issue. No, everything stays at the LTV. So how are we supposed to garnish wages? Like, are they going to put into place some kind of process like the small claims court does so that they can process garnishment of wages? Like, it doesn't cover this They don't here. cover anything. And no, no. there's going to be amendments. Now, I can give you some grants of, like, some little perk on here, but there should be some amendments to it. Now, what those amendments look like, I have no clue. When we were on the webinar today, I said to them, like, how do we contact everybody on this phone right now? Because they took turns explaining each section. And they gave us the email, and we were, gave them the report again of solutions that we felt were necessary to change the act in a way to encourage more investors into the industry versus the fact that it's discouraging them and they're out of the industry and we're moving more stock. Inside of the government report alone, it will state that they plan to lose 100,000 units in the next decade. And that's based on previous government contracts with agreements with other landlords, and they're not signing up again because they know that the law is tilted against them. Mm -hmm. So we got this one, which I, from having the um, housing gap is what TVO is doing as a, as a TV series, and they have our elected officials on there, and he said the bill seems to be generated towards developers more so and protecting just the tenants in itself. Mm -hmm. But they have a por portion where it's update the land lease and mobile home rules. The proposed changes would allow landlords to maintain the health and safety of land lease communities and perform necessary maintenance by recovering the full cost of major mm -hmm. infrastructure upgrades like the water and sewage system, using the above guideline rent increase without needing an order from the government authorities. Changes would also ensure that these costs are paid within a reasonable time frame. Since the maintenance requirement in a land lease community are different from other rentals, we would explore whether some type of maintenance costs should be treated separately from rent. Why can't we get that? If we're doing uh, like a um, renovation to the unit because the unit is so 
far gone that it needs to be updated to have people living there because it's inhabitable. The, yeah. And we have to offer it back to them for the same rent and it costs us a hundred grand to make it make that happen. Make it happen. Yeah. We just have to eat that hundred grand. Where they can somehow get a maintenance cost. I wonder if that. that's in lieu I wonder if that's in speculation of the the yeah, tiny homes that are coming in. I wonder if this is in preparation for that because those are considered kind of mobile homes. Ah, I wonder if that is possible. related to that. But it's still unfair. I, I know it's totally unfair, but I'm just wondering if that's like a preemptive legislation for, for the tiny homes that they want to promote. Mm -hmm. And I think this tiny homes is about putting the supply out there. One, it's going to cause so much more problems than you can actually think of. Mm -hmm. Number two, all it does, it puts the rents up to the normal size units. And that's what's going to happen. Oh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. this is a full unit. This is the rent. Here's your tiny home. I hope you don't have uh, any type of anxiety for small spaces because you're probably going to have a mental meltdown down in here. But small homes or tiny homes, again, it's going to be a developer that's giving the ideas into the elected mm -hmm. officials. Sure. And that's why they're doing it. Similar to the allow greater flexibility for employers to provide employee housing. Yeah. What? <clears throat> what? Does your job freaking give you like any type of housing? So that's more for people who get, um, just because I work in payroll, I know this, um, like people who they have at one of their locations that they really want to work at a different one. So they put them up and house them at the other location to, to kind of to work for them there because they need them at that one. So they'll house them there. Well, okay, um, just, and simply put, the people that they're wanting to, have, to hire can't find units. So well, that's to compensate for the fact that the people that the business is hiring, they can't find units where they are. So we they, have some employees that work for us at my company that are U.S. citizens right. that work for us here in Canada. So right. they're expat employees. So we pay 100% of their housing. Like we find them houses because we need them to work here, even though like their families live in the U.S. Sure. So they're here maybe like four days a week. They go home for free. But we're paying for their housing because they're already paying for a house where they're from. Sure, it sure. could be something like that situation where an employer houses them, or if there's like a temporary site where, let's say, you have to go somewhere and work there for six months, they can house you for six months while you do a temporary job. Sure. So I think that's kind of. Where but when, that's they, at. when they talk about that, it says to help them attract top talent, employers will be able to offer their employees affordable housing options closer to where they work and the opportunity to build Edward through a land lease agreement that meets their unique needs. So is this trying to say that employers will be given like a tax break to like build affordable housing for their employees near their work? Like I I don't know. This is not clear. This this I I I, I bet you my my eleven year old because wrote something better. Uh, next one. Sustainable Community Housing System proposed changes to the Housing Service Act 2011 would enable Ontario to update the community housing system to ensure it is sustained over the long term. <laughs> if passed, we will consult with the service managers who also get started off at $96,000 a year salary it and stakeholders. That, no, that's me. <laughs> and stakeholders on, our, on regulations to protect and grow community housing supply, improve the community housing access system, and encourage innovation business like approaches. These these changes uh, build on the commitments of the community housing renewal strategy and the steps we've already taken to make life easier for tenants and housing providers, including removing rules that penalize people from working more hours or going back to school. Number two, making rent year to income calculations easier for tenants and providers by using income tax information. Three, Filing, filling vacant community housing units faster. They have vacant units that they're not filling? Because they right. can't renovate it. Oh, okay. They can't renovate. they got no money to renovate it, so it's just empty. And now they want to create it faster. So it's like what it, more taxpayers' dollars is being used mm -hmm. to create this freaking government housing. Just like our last video, we had 48 units being created in the region of Waterloo from provincial, the federal, I municipal funding. Right and, and crowdfunding $5 million for 48 units. If you gave $70,000 to 181 homeowners, it gives them a secondary income to help them 
achieve their long-term long retirement plans and it puts 180 units on the market in six within six months six within six months it's not going to take two to three years to put the shovel in the ground and again the taxpayers are not going to pay to the, be maintaining that rental unit no. to manage that rental unit and it may be part of the government using subsidies to subsidize the private landlords if we did it but they're subsidizing the rent and they're paying to build this i don't get it okay am i wrong here guys like come on we got some views on here right now are am i wrong why are we still building with taxpayers dollars when you have eager to entrepreneurs investors who want to be in this industry and the government is trying to beat us to the punch and trying to take taxpayers dollars and create an unsustainable system 78 units in Toronto will be built for 20 million dollars and not only that they don't have to take people with a criminal background so yeah not, no that's so, next point here. <laughs> protecting so, people who live in the community housing by allowing housing providers to turn away tenants who have been previously evicted from the community housing for serious criminal activity well we can ask for a criminal background check sure we can but they don't have to provide one that's right so but if really they don't provide it, then you know they got yeah. something to hide for you. Yeah. yeah, you really have to do your due diligence. That's what it tells me. When I was at the landlord and tenant board for my above the guideline increase, because we were the only ones there that day, I was talking to the adjudicator about it, about um, background checks and, and credit checks. And he's like, well, you can do it. You just need their permission. And I'm like, of course. But like, sorry, who's going to 100% give you their their permission to like well I don't know the, the rental everything. climate is such that they may and th you it's know, true people this, are this, this, this can was work in our favor this, this is was a few years this ago fight. this was a few years ago but yeah. like you kind of need to ask for yeah. it now they could be because right. how long sure. does it take us to get people out you need to know everything uh, like see yeah. I, I used <laughs> to say you meet somebody for 10 minutes and then you rent them your unit I think right. we need to Invite them over for dinner. We need to start putting in the practice of spending more time. Invite them over for dinner. Spending more time with the people that we're seriously interested in. No, that's true. And we'll start at the end of the video. We'll talk about some ways that we got to get around this. And sorry, Maria. Like I, I know that you tagged me in your post in your group there. I, I, I was waiting for the one o'clock uh, webinar with the government today to really give you my opinion on <laughs> what this bill was. I had some high hopes. I don't know why I did, but I did. Um, I really wanted to grab that information first before I came on to really be vocal about if this bill was good or if it was bad. And I can tell you, it's shit. Okay, on to... Oh, I'm sorry. Bleep, bleep, bleep. bleep. Yeah. bleep. <laughs> Ontario Mortgage and Housing Corporation. Dissolving the Ontario Mortgage and Housing Corporation through Ontario Mortgage and Housing Corporation Appeal Act would shift the financial responsibility of various legacy housing programs from the agencies to the ministry. The proposed change would have no impact on programs or the public as the agency work is already performed by the ministry staff. Building better. To help increase the housing supply, the government is proposing amendments to the Building Code 1992 to enable the creation of the administrative, the real act is 34 pages long, by the way, guys. So we have that That's located right. in the group. Yeah. <laughs> Authorities that would help deliver fast and better services. The proposed changes are enabling the nature and would allow for the future creation of administrative authority to deliver delegate building code services. No decision has been made at this time about the service of the administrative authority would deliver. So now they're going to be dissolving CMHC. Is that? To I'm not reason? exactly sure what and, that means. And because yeah. they come out with these programs to give incentives and to give grants for the landlords to be building, just like the region is crying for landlords to work with them to provide units to them to place people who are currently on the waiting list. Well, with this new act that could possibly be put into law after the readings and it passing, would would you want to get into being a landlord if you weren't currently one? It wouldn't entice me. It wouldn't entice the me. The question that we had was the purpose of this bill what do you think is going to happen? They said to encourage more landlords into the industry. But they but they they not even the name of the not even the name of the act. It's called protecting tenants and, and strengthening, strengthening the community, community housing, housing act. But they seriously what about think helping that tenants help landlords, landlords helping landlords help tenants. 
We got land of to, to dump their places, yep. sell them, but not just sell them, sell them to someone who's willing to convert them into back into a single family home. Well, there's no point in selling it as a as an investment because you have a tenant there who could come back with you at, for two years later, and um, if you don't give it back to them. So if you don't, so what I mean by that is if you have a, a buyer that wants to buy it as a, an investment, you have to keep the same tenants. So yeah. what buyer is going to do that? What buyer is going to buy an investment property and have to keep the same tenants mm -hmm. if the tenants are paying way below market? Hi, Dina. We we're really we get so passionate in these in these chats that we have that. We've been really neglectful in saying hi to everyone who's watching. <laughs> so we want to thank everyone who's watching. I'm hoping to upload this on YouTube as well so we can kind of let everyone know, like, we are been busting our asses trying to get this report out to the members, to get the members to get it to their MPPs so that it can influence them if they're going to plan to vote for this type of bill or not. And we're hoping that it would help with the type of amendments and we're just waiting to see what type of committee is going to be overseeing this type of bill at the same time. And we don't want you to stop doing that. Still get this report of the solutions that we have. We want you to send that out there to your MPP and of course the Minister of Housing and honestly, I like to know one, why we have a minister who's a municipal affairs and housing. We need a minister of just housing. Housing in Ontario has become such a shit show, beep, um, that oh, we, <laughs> screw it, we're done beeping. I'm done beeping. This is 10 years of advocating, advocating nonstop. And it's gone, gone to the point where how are we going to fight back? We've contacted four law firms. We're thinking that they're not getting back to us quite yet because one, they have to do an investigation. It's going to take time for them to investigate. They know that the Ontario Ombudsman is actively investigating, but from our understanding is that the Ombudsman has stated that the Social Justice Tribunals of Ontario has ceased Communication. communications with the Ombudsman. So they give themselves a nice 6% increase. But now they've come down to the point where they're now ceasing to communicate with the Ontario Ombudsman. And to know that the Ontario Ombudsman is actively investigating the Social Justice Tribunal, the ministry comes out with this. That's correct. And I, I just don't get it. I just... Well, it doesn't address the key issue. The key no. issue is non-payment of rent and the delays of the LTV. Those yep. are two key issues. If we were to resolve those things, things would be a lot better. But those are the two main complaints. Don't forget, we have... What is it? 15,423,000 applications from landlords for non-payment of rent. It's the number one application. And we have 8,200 applications from tenants. And of those applications, uh, the highest um, applications on their side is not for maintenance. And it's we have 258,000 people homeless in this country. Is this right. country or province? I'm well, getting province, confused now. Ontario. And there's over 35,000 people that are homeless and never get a night. Then we, you know, what's sad to see though, guys, is that the actual, the face of homelessness now is our seniors. It's the people who are on fixed income mm -hmm. and they can help that on many different ways of helping them get the money for what the rental, rental rate is. But sometimes we have a problem with accessibility and that's why they're staying in local shelters because they have elevators to use. And these people are now inside shelters in a very threatening situation from other people who are living in the shelters. And these are seniors who are not being taken care of by our government in itself. But the amount of money that these people can save by the by pulling landlord and tenant board forms that should not be handled at the landlord and tenant board, such as non payment rent, because there's no reason why they should not be paying the rent. The salary that would be sent to these adjudicators can pay for these people's rent to keep them in their homes. The type of developments in region of Waterloo at 12.77 million. Give it to the tenants to keep them in their place. It's almost like that pilot program that they were trying to come out with. And the board government stopped it. Uh, giving everybody a little extra, I think it was like an extra $2,500 or something like that throughout mm -hmm. the year to help cover these type of costs. Right. And now with the coronavirus, we have Justin Trudeau like, oh, Oh, Canadians should not have to worry about paying the rent. See, that's the headline, but then it also says groceries and other things too. So it just makes me think that people are going to be like, it's okay not to pay my rent. The Prime Minister told me to. But well, that how it, many excuses are we going to get? But, but when you but when you leave the grocery store with the
loaf of bread, you have to pay for it before you leave. Yeah. But that that is not what it's saying. But that's what that the article is, the, yeah. like the heart, the article makes it seem like he's he's saying that the, the government is going to provide funding for people who end up with the coronavirus and, and can't, can't go to work. Yeah. They're gonna create Nothing some good. kind of fund yeah. so that they can give them money so that they can pay the rent. So it's not don't pay your rent. It's if you get sick, we have a plan in place to help oh. you pay your bills. True. Sure. That's how they should have came out. With that. Not yeah. hey, you don't have to pay your rent. That no. pisses me off. And how many people are going to use that? How many people are going to say, oh, I was quarantined? Well, I've already Whenever. seen in the group, and I can kind of understand people's concerns, even though I personally do not feel that this country has a pandemic pandemic problem with us having just a little over 100 cases in Canada. But I can see where people don't want, like if they're giving notice to move, their landlord coming in and showing their property to prospective tenants because they're worried they could get sick but it's not a huge issue here yet wait till we have 7,000 cases and then I, I I will agree yeah we have an issue well but right now we're yeah. blowing it out of proportion well I'm ready to blow this bill out of proportion yes. because of the fact that it's obviously it's it's just smoke and mirrors mm -hmm. it's smoke and mirrors so what do we what do we do to respond? What is it that you know landlords can do? We've pretty much done as much as we can, but what can we still keep doing um, to make a difference? Call your MPP. It's definitely calling your MPP and tell them that you disapprove of this Bill 184. Send them the report with other suggestions so that they have something to at least advocate on behalf of of you. Um, make sure that you're even though you know the lack of communication is. is dead in the water from the Ontario Ombudsman and the Social Justice Tribunals of Ontario. Our next step is to really hammer the doors of the Social Justice Tribunal to get an actual meeting with them to see what is actually happening. Um, at the same time, we were like, well, I don't think landlords have ever protested and at Queen's Park and it's going to come down to, is it going to be worth our time to do so and to plan it? We had over 200,000 teachers at Queen's Park. And I get it, it never went anywhere because these union teachers, they've been doing it over and over and over again. It's, it's, I'm glad that poor government's stepping up and be like, you know what, enough Well, I heard enough. that they came to an agreement today. For the Catholic, I think for the Catholic. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, the Catholic. I know. They'll, they'll still be fighting with the public probably for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's like, if we're planning to do this, we have to do it in a way that, A, it has to be through a Monday to Thursday situation um, when they're sitting. To um, the coronavirus and, and when they come back because they're also going to be put on hold as well. So we got to see if, you know, the time frame of that, making sure that this protest is planned uh, before the second and the third reading portion has, uh, has happened because uh, there's no point in protesting if they already got the third reading happening. Um, so a lot of it's going to be almost like a last minute, but it's about making our presence known that we are people. We are people and then we're not being respected by our, our elected officials and we want to become a landlord union so that before they create these different type of policies that really affect our business and our operation, they need to consult with us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and landlords, do the bare minimum now. Until the government starts listening to us, don't be putting everything and anything into your rental units and bending over backwards until the government, and say, listen, like, I want to do this for you, tenants, you know, but I, I have to do this to, to stand ground to the elected officials because they're going to be the reason why that you're getting an above the guideline rent increase. This is why you're getting a rent increase every single year. This is why we're no longer um, having fridge and stoves or washers and dryers being included within our rental units. This is why we're not having parking included within your rental rate. It's extra if you want it. And normally you charge a little extra for a second spot. You should start just charging it for one spot. Here's your rental rate, but if you want parking, here's another one. I'm considering doing that. I'm considering no washers and dryers, just leaving hookups, charging extra for parking. Yeah. I really am considering that. Air conditioners, is that part of the utility that now could be brought to the landlord and tenant board with your fee? Start charging extra for that. Start no. putting the bare minimum in, because if they want to see maintenance, like they want us to deteriorate our units just as bad as they deteriorated their own government, their government housing units. 
because they they can't keep up and they can't keep affording to keep building and managing and maintaining and subsidizing on the back of the taxpayers. When every election that goes on, every elected official is like, we want to keep more money in your pocket. We want to respect your taxpayers' dollars. Well, the province is obviously, you know, doesn't care, and they're taking your money left, right, and center. I need your opinion, guys. Which way do you want me to go here? I'm, I'm, to tell you the truth, I'm ready to put in the towel because I don't think that this is, I don't know how. They're not listening. And they're doing it because we're, we're the emergency shelter cost with no cost to the taxpayers. And that's why they're planning to be, be putting more and more responsibilities on us. And this is, and this is not even, the bill that's out there, this does not even include the amendments. So when we have other other people on top of it. Well, I still want to know where who they I really want to know who they consulted. Because we need to find out how are they getting this information, who's consulting with them to create this. And they say That's that they, the they gotta to talk be. to the social justice tribunals about how to speed up this process. They don't know how to fix who's it. Who's covering them? But they know how to fix it, because if they knew how to fix it, we wouldn't be in this mess. No. So I don't even understand how they can ignore the audience then. Like I thought it doesn't have any weight, I guess. I don't know. They can just make a re recommendation to the assembly to have something of their recommendations voted on if they if they do it. And the, and the ombudsman is taking time out of that. They're spending an hour, hour and a half, three hours with people to getting their issue and getting their solution. Mm -hmm. And they're frustrated too. And we're telling them on the phone, like yeah. they're like, oh well, where is your social justice? Like where is your hearings? I'm like, it used to be in a swimming, a community swimming area. Oh, it was? Yeah. Where is it now? Um, it's at the local hockey arena. Really? Yeah, there's no seats at all for sitting. I was nine months pregnant, standing there for an hour, waiting to go in and have a case heard. Right. Like, uh, they, they can't even, it's like, and most of them are in hotels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I personally don't care where they have it. Just as long as they do it. Just they do it. I mean, they just it. it the adjudicators, they keep it showing up up in our north. The adjudicators, they waited yeah. five months to have a hearing. Right. And the adjudicator never even showed up, and now the landlord's waiting another two months. Right. And that's not fair at all. That's not even close to being fair. Yeah. So, how anybody have a connection to a law firm that's ready to pounce on this, let's go. But I know that the government's working with our money. They're going to run us out of time and money if you kind of look at it. And unless we kind of bring it to, you know, the Ontario human rights. But again, it's probably going to take four to five years for that to go through the process of that. Well, I think also, I think the general population needs to know the plight of the landlord. I think that taxpayers would be appalled to know that they pay for tenants, um, legal costs of the tribunal um, for every single tenant regardless of income. I think the general public would be appalled to know that that tax dollar, their tax dollars are going towards that. Um, the general population doesn't know that. Uh, there's a lot of things that the general population doesn't know. They don't know how long a tenant can not pay a landlord. They have no idea. I think these kinds of issues need to be out in the media more so that we get more support, not just from landlords, but from people in general. So remember who had their hands into this. Make sure they like put into this on this thread so that we can kind of know. If you contacted your MPP with the report, please put your name inside of this uh, on this thread here so that we know which MPP had it and which MPP didn't do anything about it. We need to know which people to vote back in again and which ones don't. Right. It seems like money really needs to influence these voters to have a seat at the table. And if they know that we're going to start donating to their campaign to get them reelected, they might be listening to us a little bit more than what they are now. I guess because we ain't throwing money at them, they're like, eh, let's just work with the developer, so to speak. But I, I'm at the point where how do we donate to their campaign to get them heard? But how is that even... They're supposed to listen to you regardless. I agree with okay. Tony. He yeah. just he just says just that, that um, they knew what was going to be in the bill before the consultation process. The consultation process was done just to say they did it. I completely agree with that. Oh yeah, and and for the sake that the tenants are coming up with N12 and N13 notices, it's not even they're not even enough. To 355 be. applications. Yeah, and we don't even know which one of those are false. That's just applications. We don't know how any of those turned out. Yeah, so there may only be out of that, there may be 50 applications. So all of this for 50 applications, it doesn't make sense. You know what, though? 
I would be happy to know that there is a list of judgments that are out there that we can look at to help us pick our future tenants. And you can keep the system which whatever way you want. But if I can know which ones are abusing the system, deal with it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, it's only fair. They want to make this, they're calling this, they want to be fair. So they're going to, if they're going to track landlords, we should be able to track tenants. It's only fair. Mm -hmm. We don't want anything more than what we're granted. We just want fairness. That's what we want. What's yep. good for the goose, it's good for the candor. That's where we want to be. Yep. At a certain point, there's a lot, even though with the one percent thing I choose, you have to make best chance and more chance. Yeah, I just got a message from one of our members like, we have a one percent vacancy rate. Pick the best of the best, guys. No, that's the truth. Exactly. Spend more time with them, make sure that do the credit check. You want. Sometimes the credit check doesn't mean everything, but again, still do it just because it is that barrier, it's another step that they have to get through. Making sure that you're spending, I usually spend about the 45 minute mark on them before you're even, you know, getting Pre them. Pre-screen before they come and look at the unit. Know who you're bringing into the unit so that you... Read between the lines. Know. The number one is like, how did you find this place? It's like, okay, I found you on Kijiji, you're going, oh, why are you moving? Okay, that doesn't really make sense. You live in the same area, why are you moving? It's just to the point where you got to read between the lines in a lot of situations and don't always believe everything that the tenant is going to tell you. A lot of our landlords do that. Mm -hmm. They believe in exactly what the tenant is saying. And just because they have a good job, don't consider them to be a good type of tenant. you got to get them as a character type of check as well to make sure that, A, you can get along with these people and not just for the sake that they make more money and this is why you're picking them. Uh, we just had a bachelor unit up here in Cambridge, 104 inquiries on a bachelor unit listed for $1,050. And you could, people were now starting to throw more money at you just to make sure that their their application get put to the top. Or they come with cash. That's always my favorite. Oh, yeah. I got cash. I got cash right now. I just have to pay for right now. It's like exactly. oh, there's a process, yeah. my friend. And you can thank your elected officials for that because this is what we have to be doing. Inv Hey, we want to protect our communities, right, guys? So make sure you do your credit checks to make sure that you don't have a criminal kind of working in, into your rental unit and ruining the enjoyment of others. And this is what we need to be doing as landlords and help each other out. I know that we have a lot of different uh, opinions and, and, uh, and differences within the group, but you, we need to be united and you need to help one another. So if someone has, hey, you know, this is my, my I have a tenant that I'm interviewing right now do I have anybody in the group that I want to bounce this off of to see if they would be picking them work together as a team to help mm -hmm. you guys screen your tenants because we may not even have to care about the landlord and tenant board and the way everything's running as long as you're picking the right type of tenants to go inside of your unit and with more and more people coming into this country and the need being even more of a desire the government's better pony up and start building more I, I don't know how they're gonna be building and building it in their backyard um, but I, I, yeah, so they, can. Can. they can make a tiny sweet. Justin mm -hmm. Trudeau, once he's done quarantine, you know, like in, in, in isolation, you know, rent some rooms out, buddy. Like, it, it's not that easy, is it? And a lot of people are turning into short term rentals because of this new bill that's coming out there. You know what? It's probably even better now. Before I thought, you know, short term is a lot of work and the yeah, cleaning but maybe, and the maybe over. now it's worth it. Do it. Even if it's the point where we start pulling your investments out of Ontario in itself move into the states we have lots of our investor friends in our group right now who are moving into the states where they have black and white acts that needs yeah. to, to help you manage your place i know glenn sutherland he pulled a lot of his ontario investments and now starts investing into the states yeah. start thinking about that let the government feel the burn of how many more units are going to be pulled off of the market and let's do us a favor. Send over an end fall notice for all of your rental units into the Ministry of Housing. There you go, buddy. We're going to take it over for our own personal use because the next person who's buying it, they just want to live it in, in, in there. They're not going to be it. They're not going to be a tenant. It's going to be a homeowner. And it's great. Like, they don't see it. This could be an investment for people of the retirement to protect everybody so that they don't feel like taxpayers have to keep investing um into something else that can keep them a helping hand that's why i'm like 181 units 
181 units, 181 homeowners that have extra income to help them with their bills, to help them with their mortgage And payments. how many of them would love to have a senior downstairs to help with? It's not just about you know yeah. filling a unit. If you've got a senior living downstairs, there's going to be a good relationship. There. Or if you have a senior upstairs doing the sure. work, and they got a nice strapping young man that she can look at while he takes out the garbage for her. <laughs> right? Well, <laughs> right? It, it happens. See, you're making an old lady's dream go to shit, guys. <laughs> I I don't know. I feel like I feel like I've been defeated. And I, I I hope I didn't let anybody down into the into the group about you know what I've been doing and how we advocate and trying to manage the group, getting everybody into the group, screening members to come in, making sure everyone's getting along, taking a look at any type of post that's been reported because that one person does not play nice in the sandbox because um, we don't tolerate that shit. You're gone. Uh, we, we had a mission in, in, in our group to really change the way that the RTA and the LTB is in a way, a way to benefit all parties. But sadly, they want to keep the chaos and the fighting happening between landlords and tenants in a way to keep feeding this massive giant of the landlord and tenant board who is constantly the only ones benefiting from this and everyone else is going to be suffering based on them wanting to feed the funds to the service managers and want to feed it to the landlord and tenant board because these developers, they're running out of land to build, guys. You need to start utilizing what we have inside in the secondary suites and putting extensions onto these current units. But the way that they have it work now, why bother? Yeah. yeah. Well, there you have it. That was our Facebook Live for tonight i'm sure that over the uh, next hour or two uh, kayla kayla I'm will have some more opinions because she gets more opinionated more opinionated as she drinks so uh we might be back on later no <laughs> <laughs> if i'm by myself you know why guys <laughs> but but keep going just keep going we thoughts. gotta wait until this bill gets fully passed within there but Push it, guys. Push it as far as you can. We're going to be meeting with Anna Scott's group. They've got about 80 to 5 to 90 landlords here in Cambridge on March 25th. We're going to be speaking to them, trying to get more mm -hmm. support from landlords. Mm -hmm. We're going to try and get ourselves into an investment group out in Hamilton as well. I know our friends up in Kingston want us to get up there and speak to them. I'm doing whatever I can until this bill is going through, but we've got a plan for plan B of how we can you know do what we can to protect the landlords in our group besides helping you with your day-to-day -day operations in this group and keeping ourselves connected but in the meantime read this bill 184 give your opinion as much as you possibly can mm -hmm. tell as many people to join the ontario landlords watch group as you and adding them in knowing that it's coming from you can get them in a little bit quicker we do have a, a wait list of people trying to get in because we can't really screen them if it looks like a, a blank account and you know they only have one friend like and they just opened up an account and like nah this way. We, we need to make sure that we're on a right, uh, we have a mission that we need to conquer. And I can't wait until I'm, I, Monday it opens up. I don't know if they're going to be in their office, though, or they're all going to be dying with the coronavirus. But we're going to keep on going until this bill is fully passed. And I really hope that we can get your support into it and let me know. Are we going to do a protest on Queen's Park? Uh, and, and the date that we were thinking there was May 28th. Uh, so that we can get people from all over to be a part of this movement. And I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what else to say. I feel like I, I, I don't know. It's you not you, it's them. Yeah, definitely not you, it's them. I don't, yeah. you talk until you're blue in the face, but they know that when they have, when they have tenants that are going to bombard their office, versus what landlords do, then they're obviously going to do things that are just for the tenant in itself. And they're going to try to do whatever they can to please the tenant group because they think that there's more tenants and there are landlords and they're the ones who are voting. But in reality, not all of them are voting, but we're the ones who can influence. So I don't know if I'm going to start cracking open my piggy bank and start giving these MPPs some of my money. And like, here, can I make you make sure that a bribe? I think they still take it. <laughs> I think they still take it. It's a scrap. Like any elected official that I would talk to, not all of them, because you're not going to say names, but they said that when 
policies and things and bills are being pushed through and bylaws, it's a wash hand situation. You wash my hand and I wash your hand. They may not believe in it, but they're going to do it because they need your support later on down the road. Po politics is so dirty, and that is what's destroying our housing our housing community is, is politics. And this is where they got to get out of our business if they're, they're screwing, up, screwing it up that bad and let us run it because we're the investors. Well, I think also part of it, they want to make um, – private landlords responsible for public housing. I think that's where it starts to fall apart. Oh yeah, you think you're just gonna have more crowdfunding and taxpayer dollars being put in to keep yeah. subsidizing these these subsidized housing units that are getting destroyed and people who have double income are living in it and getting all the perks of different government programs and here we're busting our asses to, to provide housing. I'm at the point where it's like, they're going to start cleaning up their own mess because social housing in itself is an unsustainable system. And taxpayers of any source should be pissed off with the way that the government is creating sub sub subsidized, rent geared to income, nonprofit housing, or corporations because there's some dirty dealings that are happening in, the, in there. And no developer should be sitting on any type of housing committee for any type of, any type of municipality. But guess where they're sitting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, guys, before I start going beep, 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 I think I'll, I'll sign off tonight and just give you guys some time to digest the Bill 184. And when you share it, give your opinion on it. Don't tell people, hey, you know, here's our new rules. Fight it. Yeah. Fight it. Hasn't it hasn't passed into law yet. This is something that we need to fight, and you got to make them feel stupid doing it. And we're hoping to have the recording from this this webinar that we had today, and we'll have to piece it together. But it's to the point where they don't even know what the hell they're doing. So make sure that you're doing your part. Take the best of the best. Don't pull on the heartstrings as much as we want to help people who are misfortunate than ours. But you have to think your your credit, your finances, your livelihood, your sanity is connected to your rental units. Don't jeopardize it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else, guys? No, you said it all. Problem is, I don't want you to end this Facebook the way you normally do. It's not happy renting. It's not happy renting. <laughs> it's not happy renting. <laughs> Have a good night. Sad renting. Sad, Sad renting. renting in Ontario. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>